Welcome to the Link Church Podcast. You are about to listen to a message from Tessa Yana, one of our lead pastors here at Link. It is an inspiring and equipping message that's going to bless your socks off. It's entitled Into the Night and it's from our Link Sisterhood Evening. We really do have some of the most amazing creative people in our church, don't you think? And they've been working hard with limited resources and time to put together an amazing visual imagery for you for our theme tonight, which is into the night. And we're really going to be looking at what it means to be women, to be the kind of people that would carry the light-giving message of Christ into the night. And I thought that what they put together portrayed that so beautifully of a dark and um, corrupted, polluted world and what happens when joy, Steph was a beautiful joy, she just embodies joy naturally. That's what happens when, when the light of Christ enters the darkness. The darkness has to recede, it has to be pushed back, and it has to depart. Because when light enters something, it completely eradicates the darkness. It cannot be absorbed into the darkness Light pushes it back and it disappears altogether. And so that was a picture, I believe, of what happens when we take ourselves, because Jesus says, you are the light of the world. And you'll have remembered I preached that earlier this year from Matthew 5, where he says to us, you are the light of the world. And we have that amazing call and that amazing identity in Christ to be his light, to go out into the darkness and to, to push it back with the power and the, the might of his spirit. Amen. So that was awesome. We have quite an action-packed, different-looking sisterhood for you here this evening. So if you came expecting what you've seen the last two times, um, you will be disappointed. But I hope that you will enjoy what we've got happening because um, we're celebrating Project 500. Yes. Which has been amazing, celebrating Project 500. We've got the amazing Sue Barnes with us here this evening, who we just, thank you, Sue, for being here. We're so grateful that you would give up of your time. You're a busy woman, yet you're here with us to inspire us and um, to take us further, I believe, in what God has called us to do. And then we're going to be launching our first ever Miss Sisterhood. <laughs> you girls are amazing. You add so much noise. Really, I have three daughters. It just, girls are so noisy. It's awesome. So y- you'll notice the Miss Sisterhood crew are the ones with the gold crowns on their head. <laughs> They're awesome. So we're really excited about that. So we'll get to all of that stuff. There's a lot going on. But before we do, I just want to leave you with a, a short, inspiring um, God word. Uh, that I believe he has for us as his daughters in this church. And it's, it's probably nothing profound. It's pro- probably something you've heard before. But I really, um, when I was preparing for this, I had thought Dill was going to preach. Yes. And so um, I, had, I had given him kind of the theme. And, and then he got this amazing opportunity to go to the Gateway Conference in Dallas. They phoned him and said, we've seen you and we've watched your church and um, Gateway are inspired by you. Gateway a Church are, are a big church in America. Robert Morris, we've just done his Blessed Life course. And so um, he was like, oh, but I'm preaching at Sisterhood. Do you think I can go? <laughs> He's very sweet like that. But um, so that's where he is. He's uh, um, on his way to Dallas because I believe that God is, um, God is taking us places places we never dreamed we would go, and he's giving us opportunities we never dreamed we would have. And I know that this is a door that we are being called to walk through. We don't know what it's going to look like on the other side, but it is, it's fun, and it's, it's definitely God. God-sized opportunities, God-sized responsibilities, but it's all lots of fun, and we're very grateful. So that's where he is. So I just wanted to share some, something short with you that I believe will inspire us as a sisterhood to go out and to be who he has called us to be because that is the most powerful thing. We can do all this stuff as women. We can get a little bit crazy and, you know, get busy doing all the good God things that we think we're supposed to do. But actually the powerful thing is when we find our identity in Christ, we be those women. Um, and, that I, and that's what I believe pushes back the darkness when we be, become who he's created us, us to be. The light of Christ shines from within us, and we go out into the, into the world, and we become the change it so desperately needs. Amen. So Jesus is the light of the world. You know that. 
it says that. And what I believe is a beautiful picture for us tonight is Jesus on the cross as the light of the world absorbs and consumes all of darkness for all of time. And I want you to picture that for a moment because I've tried to picture that moment where Jesus stretched out his arms and, and consumed the wrath of God that was on him. I've tried to picture that, that moment, that he would do that for me. It is an, it's an amazing thing to think that my, my Jesus, our Jesus would do that. He would stretch out his arms and consume all of darkness, all of sin for all of time and all that it produces, death, condemnation, shame, sickness. He consumes that, but it doesn't end there. Darkness seems to have won, but the next day dawns and he rises, again. he rises from the grave, defeating death and darkness and sin for all of time. And that is why you and I get to stand here today in freedom to worship him, to come boldly into his presence because of that moment that he did for us on the cross. And so I want us to really be mindful of that tonight, that Jesus has consumed all of the darkness. And yes, we are in this world. And yes, there's still life to be lived out here. And yes, it is a dark place. But victory is certain. We can stand on the promise that Jesus consumed all of darkness. And now we get to partner with him in seeing that work itself out until he comes again. So I'm excited to be part of a church who believes in going out, being the light, so that the darkness can recede. Amen? Okay. And so what I wanted to touch on is the, the scripture that was um, the inspiration for tonight came out of Philippians 2, all right? And the message version talks about carrying the light-giving message of Christ into the night. But if you read it in, a, um, in the NIV version... It actually talks about living a life worthy of the gospel, of, of taking on the image of Christ, of Christ-likeness. And I believe if we, could in, if we could become these kind of women, if we can trust and believe in faith that because of what Jesus did, we can be these women, I believe that as a sisterhood, we are going to go to places we never dreamed we could go. Because it's when we become the light of Christ, not when we do all the right things, that change starts to happen, that people are spoken to. And so let's go to Philippians 2. I don't know if you guys were here in 2012. Some of you might not have known Link in 2012. In 2012, Dill preached a message called The Unfair Advantage. Anyone? Raising hands? Not many people here in 2012. Okay. Some people here. That's awesome. 2012 was what I believe was the year of the Lord's favor over my life. It was an amazing year. So I remember things from 2012. And he preached a message called The Unfair Advantage. And I believe if we can become those kind of women, if we can trust God and walk into all he has for us and believe that that is who he has created us to be, we will cause a stir in the city because people will take note of the way that we are, not all that we're doing. Because it's not actually our doing that sets us apart from the world. It's who we are. And it's who he's created us to be. And so I want to look at four key character traits that I'd love us to adopt and become. So let's go. Philippians 2. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in the spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. And the unfair advantage, as Dill likes to call it, is an embodying of humility in four different ways. Okay, encouragement. That's the first one. Would we be known as women who encourage beyond what's comfortable and convenient, beyond what's right and um, what we feel like doing? 
Because believe me, I know that when someone's getting up my nose and hasn't been really nice to me and has said things that have hurt me, it's very difficult to then step into her presence and encourage her, encourage the God potential in her. Because actually, I just want to tell her that I don't like her very much. So, yeah, I'm normal. Good to know. Um, I have normal feelings like normal ladies. And if you are a woman in this place, you have probably felt like that. It's hard to encourage someone, young and old, and no matter who you are, it's hard to encourage someone when you're feeling hurt, especially when you're feeling like, "Mm, I don't want to encourage her because then maybe that, you know, people will think that she's better than me. We have this little competitive thing going on. But would we become women who encourage the God potential? Would we call out what we see in ladies, what God has put in their hearts, what he has placed in their destiny? Would we speak the life of Christ over people, even when it is not comfortable and convenient, even to the people that have hurt us? And would we do that in their presence? Would we do it on Facebook? Would we do it in private? Because that's what's... I believe a heart of humility is all about encouragement. Would we be, would be, would, ha, hello. Would we be, hallelujah, women who encourage each other? Amen. Secondly, fellowship. Rory Dyer always says, two fellows in a ship. That's fellowship. It takes more than one. Would we be women who are committed to more than one? being together, gathering, eating meals together, doing life together, sharing life together, fellowship. Would we be committed to good community and fellowship? So if you are an introvert in this place, that's okay. If you like to be on your own, that's okay. But I'm going to say again, I believe and I know that it is the truth of God that we are better when we are together. And it's not always convenient and it's not always comfortable. And sometimes I would rather be on my own figuring out life. But sometimes we're not good on our own. And sometimes our brains are crazy, okay? And sometimes when you're on your own for long enough, you start to tell yourself stupid things. Find friends, people who can speak good, godly, life-giving encouragement and counsel into your life because if you believe it, I am better when I'm with other people, your life will change. My life changed when I started to listen to what other people had to say and didn't always go according to my agenda. It's hard. It's not always easy. But I really do believe that if we could be committed to being together, believing that we're better when we're together, we will see the city change. We're not on our own campaign. We are not sisterhood on our own. We are sisterhood that comes alongside the men of Link Church to see the world change for Jesus because we believe the church is the hope of the world and we're not interested in doing it on our own. Amen. We are better when we're together. That is fellowship. That is the heart of girls who say we're committed to fellowship even when we don't feel like it. Amen. Comfort. The fort must come. Dylan said that. I think it is so random. So he says... The fort must come means you put a fort around someone. The fort must come. You protect them. You protect them with your presence. You protect them with your words. You protect them with generosity. Would we be a sisterhood that is known as a comfort in this community? A place where people can come and feel like they are having a fort of generosity and amazing kindness put around them. The kind of girls that say, you can come and sit with us. You don't look the same, you don't behave the same, you don't speak the same, and you make me feel a little uncomfortable, but you can come, and I will put a fort of protection around you. And especially would we be those girls within church, would we protect each other with our words, would we be kind to each other? The world can be harsh. It doesn't need to be harsh in these doors, in this house. Let's protect one another. Let's commit to be the girls that are kind with our words and with our actions. Believe me, I have daughters. We need to teach kindness. Girls can be nasty. 
and it starts young. And if we don't talk it through and we don't call it out and we don't work on it, it doesn't go away. We just sometimes feel like we need to put someone in their place, subtly with like hints, woman style. Let's not do that. Let's be secure. Let's find our identity in Christ. Let's stand on who he says we are and believe that I can encourage you. I can do life with you. I can comfort you because I know who I am and I know whose I am. And so I don't need to worry about where you're placed and what position you're in and, you know, all that stuff. I can encourage you because God has put good, amazing things in every single woman in this room and out of this room, beyond, into the city. We've all been created with the genius of God inside of us, creative genius, and so let's call that out. And the fourth one is compassion, shared passion. I want to build a sisterhood with you that is known for its shared passion, that we would get excited about doing crazy things that have never been done before, that we would fight injustice like, like crazy people, like women on a mission, that our maternal in- instincts would kick in. You'll find out about those one day, girls. That, we would, that those would kick in and we would want to protect those less fortunate than ourselves, that we would want to protect those who are victims of abuse and injustices that are just not right, that that righteous anger would burn inside of us to see change happen in our community, that we wouldn't be content to just sit by and watch it happen and post a moving picture on Facebook and hope that that would do something, that we would become women who truly, truly would be passionate together about each other and about amazing causes like Project Dignity, like what we're getting behind tonight, that we would be passionate about doing good being the light on this earth. And so those are the four things I wanted to leave you with that I believe if we embody humility, that is what it looks like to encourage, to comfort, to do fellowship with one another and to be passionate together, to be compassionate together. And so that was what I really wanted to leave with you tonight is that if we would become the light, it's gonna take humility Christ-likeness. And I want to really encourage you all to go home and pray because I can't do that for you. And I'm also on a journey of asking God to do a good work in me because I'm believing that He will. And I ask Him, please God, would you give me the courage and the faith to encourage somebody that I don't feel like encouraging today? Would you remind me that fellowship is important and that being together is important to you and that I'm better when I'm together with others? Would you help me to find girls to be like-minded with, to be passionate with, to be compassionate with? And would you give me the strength to comfort those even when I'm feeling like I need comfort myself? Amen? And then the last thing I just wanted to share with you is just a word I believe God has for all of us in this room, but maybe it would be particularly for Sam, I don't know. But if you look at Jesus' ministry, the Father says to him in Matthew 3, and you can go and read it. It's Matthew, verse three, uh, Matthew 3, verse 17. This is my beloved Son, with whom I'm well pleased. And the interesting thing to me is that the Father says this to Jesus before he's done one thing. He hasn't begun his ministry. He hasn't, he hasn't done any miracles No water and no wine has been changed. He hasn't healed any sick people. He hasn't raised the dead to life. He hasn't done a thing. And yet the Father looks down from him and a voice from heaven says, this is my beloved son with who I am well pleased. And I felt that God wanted to say to his daughters tonight, before you stepped into this room, before you decided to serve in church, before you you know, I really want to be the best mom in the world. I really want to serve you, Jesus. I really want to love like no other. Before you had all the good intentions to do anything, the Father's words over you are, you are my beloved, my beloved daughter with who I am well pleased. You don't have to do a thing. And I believe God wants to shake off 
Jesus wants to shake off some of that condemnation and shame we're feeling as women to do stuff. And he's saying, just be. I'm calling you to be, to step out, yes, and to maybe do something, but that out of the overflow of who I am in you and who I have called you to be. And the amazing thing for me is that some of the Bibles, translations, leave out the word beloved. And this is what beloved means. So if the, you leave out the word beloved, it says, this is my son with who I am well pleased. But if you put beloved in, it says, this is my beloved, my precious, my adored, my treasured, my cherished one with who I am well pleased. You are treasured, you are adored, you are cherished, and you are precious in this place. And I don't know what's been spoken over you, but I want to comfort you tonight, and I want to encourage you, and I want to say the Father sees you, and He says you are His beloved. That is your identity before you do a single thing, before you decided to get all excited about Project 500, and even if you've done nothing. It was a bit of a busy season, or you just didn't feel like doing Project 500. You are my beloved with who I am well pleased. And so I want you to listen to this. Listen to this because I'm going to keep saying it until I believe the Father tells me to stop saying it. Sisterhood is all about who we are. All about who we are. And what we do is amazing and it's going to have an incredible impact on this city. It already is. Sisterhood is who we are. Sisterhood is an encouraging force for good. Sisterhood is a fort of comfort for those who desperately need to encounter Jesus. Sisterhood is a place where we can gather and fellowship with one another when people have cast us out and said that we can't sit with them, that we're not good enough and we don't have a space. Sisterhood is where we can find passion together with people and go out and become all Jesus has created us to be. Amen? And so would you leave here tonight full of faith and full of courage, knowing that God sees you, he knows you, he has not passed you by. And his words for you is, take your identity from my words, you are my beloved. You, sisterhood, are my beloved. That is who you are. And everything you do flows out of that. My grace is sufficient for you. You are my beloved. You don't have to do a thing. Amen? So be free. We're going to have some fun now. You're all looking very tense. That's supposed to like make you cry or smile or, you know, relax. But I really do believe that Jesus is here and he is speaking to us even now. He's speaking into the depths of our hearts. He loves his girls, right? He really does. He really does. And I'm so excited that you would all come out here and give up your Wednesday evening to fellowship and to be encouraged because I know that it has significant impact on our worlds. We can go back into our families and go back into our schools and go back into our workplaces, standing up a little bit straighter because we know the Father's eye is on us and we're His, the, our identity in Him is secure as His beloved, beloved daughters.